Now, I know in the past we've had messages uh, dealing with this aspect of the perfect man. In this message, I'd like to look at a different aspect, a different view, um, and focus more upon the man versus the perfect man. Um, because you can't have one without the other. There's no way you can come to this place of a fully developed, mature man spiritually without perfection. There's got to be perfection. And... Paul said something very significant when he said these words. When I became a man, I put away childish things. How do you know when you're becoming a spiritual man? That means you've moved from a babe to a child, from a child to a son, from a son to a man. How do you know you've moved from son to man? I remember Jesus called himself the son of man. We can be like Jesus. You'll never be the son of God. But you can be the son of man. Now you could be the son of God as far as sons, but not son, capital S. And nobody will ever be the Son of God. The Son of God is the Son of God. But He's also the Word. You're certainly never going to be the Word. God, the Son, is just as much God as the Father and the Holy Ghost. No beginning, no end. You and I have a beginning with no end. Now, how do you know you're coming to this place of being a spiritual man? When you start putting away childish things. What might these childish things be? <clears throat> That's for you to uh, write down on a piece of paper. Write down on a piece of paper the things that you think of when you think of childish. I'll give you a couple of things that I would think of would be irresponsible, uh, fear, being afraid, um, those are a couple of things I can think of when I think of being childish, lack of understanding, lack of wisdom. Now, you take the time to write down on a piece of paper what you think of when you think of childish. <clears throat> We're going to be reading <clears throat> from Galatians chapter 4. And we're going to be looking at this idea of being delivered from being under the law. A lot of folks don't understand this, but the law is a schoolmaster. The law is a schoolmaster. In fact, let's go ahead and read Galatians chapter 3 and 4 so we can have a, a proper understanding. <clears throat> Paul is speaking to the Galatians, and he says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently sent forth, crucified among you? 
This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, and if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Even as Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scriptures, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not into seeds as many, but as to of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the, the law which was four hundred and thirty years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hands of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scriptures have concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, now listen to this part, before faith came, we were kept under the law. Before faith came, we were kept under the law. And if we were under the law, folks, we were under the curse. Because you're cursed if you're under the law. Now listen to what it says here. Before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. That means if you're living by faith in Christ, you're no longer living under the law. You're no longer living by a schoolmaster. For you are children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. <clears throat> there is neither bond or free. There is neither male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, 
Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, notice Paul is talking past tense, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. Paul's saying, I'm not a child anymore. I'm not under the law. Paul's saying, I'm not in bondage anymore. I'm not in bondage to this world. I'm not a slave to my sin. I'm not a slave to the flesh. I'm not a slave to, to, to the law anymore. I'm not under the law. Paul is helping us to understand that he's now free. How did he get free? He tells us how he got free. He got free because of faith. Because when faith came, he was no longer under the law. So then, we understand that the principle of faith is that faith is believing God's word. It's not by the works of the law that we're justified, folks. It's by faith that we receive justification. It's by faith we receive righteousness. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that you might receive the adoption of sons. Now, this is something that's not being taught today. Most do not even understand this, um, this truth of the placing of sons, the adoption of sons. In the Jewish customs, a child at the proper age would be placed as a son in the family. Jesus, when his parents went, uh, had left Jerusalem, this was after Jesus' bar mitzvah, Jesus was just had had his bar mitzvah and Mary, Joseph, and the others had all left Jerusalem. They thought Jesus was among them. And Jesus did not go with them. Remember, he's of age now. He's a, he's a uh, son um, and he is of age. He's been placed as a son. He's an adult. You understand? He's an adult. He may not be a fully developed man at this point, but he's a, an adult as far as placement. And he's now equal with the father in the family business. The father has given him that right. The father has given him that, that uh, p place to make decisions, to uh, run the father's business. And at this point, uh, when they come looking for Jesus and they find him, he, not that he was lost, it was they that were lost, but anyway, when they come back and they come to Christ, remember while they sought Jesus sorrowful, they were sor sorrowing, looking for Jesus, that's a type of us being under the law. That's a type of us under the curse. It says when you come to Christ, right? When you come to Christ, the veil is done away. The, 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 the law is it's not that the law is done away. It's that you rise above the law in the sense that the law brought you to Christ. So here they are looking for Jesus and, and they come to him and Mary says, you know, where, what, why'd you do this to us, son? What, you know, we sought you sorrowing. We were looking for you. And there's a lot of folks today that call themselves Christians that are still full of sorrow. They still have not come to Christ. And they're still not walking by faith. They're still not experiencing joy unspeakable and full. They're still not enjoying God's peace because they're not walking by faith. They live from day to day by their feelings and their, their uh, circumstances dictate to them how they're going to, uh, how happy they're going to be. That's not living by faith. We shouldn't be up and down, up and down. We should get to the place where 
we become stable in the Lord, where we become uh, secure in the Lord. And <clears throat> we see here that uh, that once you do become a son, that God sends forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. And then it goes on to say, Wherefore thou art no more a servant. You're not, a, you're not under the law anymore. You're not under a schoolmaster anymore. But now you're a son. And if a son than an heir of God through Christ. I mean, I don't know if we altogether understand what Jesus has given to us. What we have in Christ. What has been provided for us. He didn't go to that cross so that we could be slaves. He went to the cross so we could be free so we could enjoy His joy, so we could enjoy His peace, so we could be in the kingdom of God. Even if we are on the earth, we could still be in the kingdom while we're on this earth and enjoy the benefits of being in the kingdom. Remember, he said that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's peace, it's joy and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Howbeit then, when you knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods. But now, after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements wherein you desire again to be in bondage? Now notice what Paul goes on to say. When he's talking about beggarly elements, when he's talking about being in bondage, listen to what he says the next verse. You observe days, months, times, and years. Paul says, if you're still living your life based on the days of the week, the months, and the times, and the years, times having to do with holidays or whatever, if you're still living by the calendar, if your calendar still dictates to you, then you're, you're living way below your privileges. And there are, I would say the majority of Christians today are still living by time, still living in this place where they live by their watch, the clock on the wall, the calendar, setting their appointments based on their calendars. And we wonder why there's such anxiousness in the body of Christ. We wonder why there is such a sense of hurrying because we're trying to get from this place to this place within this certain amount of time. Well, no wonder Paul the Apostle talked about God's speed. God's speed. You know, Jesus was never confined to a calendar. He was never confined when he was on the earth to, to a clock or a watch. Time. Um... In a lot of ways, I think time was instituted by the Romans, was brought in, and it started in Egypt, by the way. And I don't believe that the pharaohs lived by time. But yet the slaves lived by time. And the timepiece they had back then was the, um, the sundial that you see in Washington, D.C. right now and at, at the Vatican. The sundial was beside the pyramid. And so when the sun would shine upon the pyramid, the pyramid was like a timepiece, and the sundial was like the hour hand on the, sun, on, the, on, the, uh, on the clock, so to speak. So when the sun was at a certain place, the, the, the sundial would be like a shadow, a line, just like on our clocks today, and you would see that hour hand at different positions. And so they had a clock. Well, I guarantee you the pharaohs, I guarantee you those of the pharaoh's house, they did not live and observe the days, the months, and the times of the years. See, this was their, their way of making the other one people live in, a, in bondage. 
And that's what they do today. When, when they get you to get up at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning, go to work at 8 o'clock for 8 o'clock and work from 8 o'clock till 5 o'clock, you come home, you are a slave to the system. You're a slave to time. You're a slave to the months and times of the year. And you, then you begin to observe, um, then you begin to observe like holidays. And then the only time, that ha the time of the year that you're really happy is like Christmas or um, Thanksgiving or mostly Christmas. But what you don't realize, it's on these holidays that the pharaohs in his kingdom uh, make their money. That's when they, you do the most labor. That's when you do the most labor intensive. Uh, that's when you put in the most hours. That's when you uh, work the hardest. That's when you spend the most is during that holiday. See, it's not a holiday for you. It's a holiday for them. While you buy their trinkets, while you uh, buy their little trinkets, you are paying them tremendous wealth so they can continue to be free financially. So they can continue not have to live by the days, the months, the times, the years. Now, someone that has tremendous wealth they're not dictated to. They don't have to um, meet certain requirements if they don't want to. It's a choice for them. But people that are slaves to the system, you have no choice. You have to be, uh, you have to line up because you're a slave. Now, do we at times uh, live according to the dictates of time, to the dictates of months, times, and years? Yes, absolutely we do, because we're living on this earth, and because even like Paul said, I became all things to all men. Some of us as Christians, we work a regular job in this world, um, and you have to live, and you have to go by the clock. But you should never be to the point where the clock becomes your law or becomes your dictation. You should always, in fact, we shouldn't really ever be living by these elements. That's what Paul is talking about when he says weak and beggarly elements. Folks, if you could understand, it is bondage. When Jesus called Peter, when he called his brothers, when he called John and Andrew, when he called these men, they immediately left their occupations behind. They immediately left their nets behind. They didn't go back right away. They went back later. We know they did that, but they didn't go back while they were serving, Je while they were following Jesus. They didn't go back and work fishing for fish. They followed Jesus. Well, how did they follow Jesus? By faith. Because when the Lord said, follow me, and they obeyed and they followed him, they now are walking in faith. Do you understand how that works? They weren't worrying about their bills. They weren't worrying about how they were going to pay their bills because they were walking in faith. But the moment that they begin to think about their bills, what happens? What happens? They start thinking about their family. They start thinking about paying the bills, being able to pay the taxes, whatever. The father's business. Then they've taken their eyes off Jesus. They're not thinking about the kingdom anymore. They don't have their mind on what... And that's what happens to us. You'll find that the most happy people on the earth are those that are full-time in the ministry. Full-time. Full-time. And they are led by the Holy Spirit, and they go where the Lord tells them to go. They do what the Lord tells them to do. These are the most fulfilled, happiest people on the earth because they're not slaves. Now, you, you may say, well, they're still slaves to Christ. Paul said he was a love slave to Jesus, but it's not the same. We're not a slave in the sense of, of, of bondage. We're not in bondage to Jesus. 
The more we become a slave to Jesus, the more we are free. The more we become one with him, the more freer we become. Now notice what Paul says, I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as you are. You have not injured me at all. Mm-hmm. 